Hey guys, wonderful to see you. God bless you, God bless you as you're coming in. Hello, hello. Hey, Miss Coach Livy, none other than Coach Livy herself. Wonderful to see you, beautiful woman of God. If you are not following Coach Livy, you gotta go follow that woman of God right now. She is on fire. She is, uh, there she is right there saying, hey queen with the pretty hearts. Uh, please go follow her. She is one that you want to be connected to. We're going to have a quick prophetic session this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. 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 This is a little early. Oh, no. It's not good morning anymore. It's 12 noon here in Atlanta. Hey, let me flip the camera so I can greet you properly. Let's go. Hey, guys. What's going on? I'm just going to apologize up front for the do product of being rained on not once but twice on yesterday but hey it is so not about me it's all about the word of god morning it's going to be a prophetic expose can i just tell you right up front it is going to be a prophetic expose oh yeah baby we're going to expose some things we are going to pull it all out into the light the lord has been talking to me for 48 hours 48 hours he's been talking to me about hidden enemies and about personal vices and so now we're going to expose two things that are going on because can i just tell you up front my friends these are weapons these are weapons that the devil is trying to form against you. He's always going to try to use things that will weaken you. He's always going to try to use things that will just get to you, get under your skin, distract you, disqualify you, get you all tied up, all that jazz, because he does not want you to grow. He does not want you to move into your destiny. He does not want you to be in position for this next move of God. And can I tell you, I don't know if you saw on Instagram this morning, but 2017 is going to be a year of promotion, baby. Somebody say promotion. Now listen, I'm not going to give away too many of the prophecies for 2017. If I'm being completely honest, I have literally three pages full of prophecy that the Lord has given me for 2017. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. But I don't think he's done. No, he ain't done. No, no, no. I know he's absolutely not done. So I'm not going to give away anything yet because something may change. Something may be added to it. Somebody said Snaggletooth Devil. I love it. Oh my gosh, that's so awesome. That is so awesome. I love you guys. All right, so 2017, I will tell you this. I will tell you this. It's going to be a year of promotion. Oh, sweetheart, mark my word. You're going to hear of so much promotion here and there uh, in business, in ministry, married couples. All You're going to hear of so much. It's going to be corn popper. You hear me? It's going to be like a popcorn popper. There's going to be some pop over here. Somebody else got promoted. Pop. They, they just got the pop. They just went off over. There. It's going to be like a popcorn popper. Now, listen to me. Some people, as sad as this is, and this is heartbreaking, some people are not comfortable with the idea of supernatural promotion. Supernatural promotion. What's supernatural promotion, Prophetess Jolyn? Uh, that's when the Lord gets in and, and handles it for you. That's when the Lord opens a door for you. That is when the Lord brings an opportunity to you. That is when the Lord takes you from the back to the front. That is when the Lord takes you from the bottom to the top. It doesn't matter if you're qualified or not because he will qualify you. It does not matter if somebody else approves of it or not if they think because the Lord is going to decide. Daniel chapter 2 tells us that he's the one that puts kings in position. So that's what's going to be going on in 2017. Therefore, and, and by the way, if you haven't noticed, 2017 is like three weeks away, okay? Three weeks away. So therefore, you can bet your last dollar that the devil, that washed up has been wannabe punk, and this little band of misfit demons, you can bet your last bottom dollar that they are going to be trying to hinder you to disqualify you, to knock you out of position any way they can, any way they can. Now, let me finish this thought before we go forward. Hold on now. 
Some people are not comfortable with the idea of supernatural promotion. How come? Uh, I'm going to talk about this later on today. I've got the post. The, the graphic is already designed. The, the post is already written up. And I want to give you a little insight right now because I believe really strongly this is going to be for somebody. Some believers, even, even though they are believers, even though they're Christian, even though they love Jesus, even though they're saved and, 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 and hopefully sanctified, some believers are not comfortable with supernatural uh, promotion. How come? <coughs> uh, those are <coughs> those are typically the people who are not comfortable with with blessing at all. They really believe that to be a Christian, to be a good Christian, that you have to live very simply, and you have to uh, uh, you have to be simple, and and you have to suffer. And and okay, and and, and, and I can I tell you something. That sounds like some Amish thinking gone wrong to me. No offense, I, I know some very lovely Amish people, but that sounds like wrong teaching. Oh, yes, it does. It sounds like wrong teaching. It sounds like people who are uh, afraid to get their hopes up. It sounds like people who have been uh, disillusioned by Satan's system of things, okay? Because the world, according to Satan, is brutal, Brutal. In Satan's world, good people get sick. In Satan's world, good people are impoverished. In Satan's world, good people are attacked and robbed. In Satan's world, anything can happen at any time because he's running things. And so sometimes people get so broke down and disillusioned and they get so tired, they become cynical is what they do. And they are not comfortable with the idea of the Lord being a God of prosperity. But I don't know how to break it to him because he is many things. He is the God of blessing. He is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shalom. Hey, we'll throw in shopping off as well. He's the God of all those things. And if you did not notice, that includes prospering us. He does all those things for us. Read your Bible. I've read mine and I continue to read my Bible every single day. And my Bible teaches me about a God whose style it is to bless his good and faithful servants. No, he's not a supernatural Santa. No, he's not a, a, a supernatural leprechaun who just wants to, you know, like dole out, uh, okay? But but he does bless his good and faithful servants. So there's going to be a lot of promotion coming in 2017. There's going to be a lot of blessing coming in 2017. And you need to know that right now there are weapons that are forming to push you out of position, disqualify you for your promotion. They're going to want to try to distract you, get you all caught up in other things. Please listen. They're, they're going to want to get you caught up in other things so that you are not noticing the doorways when they swing open, so you don't see the blessing when it, went, when it drops right at your feet, so that you are in no position mentally, emotionally, spiritually uh, to go for it when you're promotion comes to you. So he's attacking people and he's distracting people. So that's, that's the two part tactic right now. He's attacking and he's distracting. He is also trying to lure people into things. Please listen. He's also trying to lure people into things that will disqualify them uh, in the courts of God, because the Bible tells us that he is the accuser of the brethren. All right, like this person right there, we got to get rid of them. They're gone. The Bible tells us that he's the accuser of the brethren. He's always looking for something to accuse you of. So you've got to be very careful right now. Be very, very, let's get into the text that I have for this show. We do that. We got to pray. And then we're going to get into this. For those who don't know, um, because sometimes I see really mean comments like, What are you doing? Are you reading from a script? What, what are you reading? I think she's asserting this off on her computer. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's called being a writer. I write things down. Okay, like I, I write notes down because uh, I, I flow, but I'm also very, very conscientious and I am committed to excellence. Oh, I've got that spirit of excellence, baby. I've got that Daniel chapter six spirit of excellence and I write things down uh, that the Lord tells me because I don't want you to miss a single thing. So I'm going to look at my notes right here, but let's play. No, I am explaining myself, honey, though. You know why? Because some people send me emails I'm like, what are you doing? So there it is. 
Okay? So now you can just focus on the word. All right, so I love you all very much. Let's pray, and then we're going to get into this because I just want to help somebody. I want us all to really move up. You know, I, I want us all to move up. Father God, we come before you on today and we just give you glory in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we are grateful, God, that you are a good God. You are a good Father. You are a faithful God. You will let us know when the weapons are forming in the supernatural, God. You will reveal the strategies and the tactics of the enemy, oh God, so that we can use the free will that you gave us uh, and rebuke the devil, so that we can use the authority that Jesus died to give us and rebuke the devil and cancel the assignment of the enemy. And that is what we are going to do today, oh God, but we thank you, Father, that you revealed this information to us, oh God. We give you glory, God. We worship you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. God, I ask you to bless each and every person listening, all the people live, all the people on the replay, even people on the web. Give them ears to hear, oh God, that which the Spirit would utter, God. Uh, help these words to fall in good, fertile soil in their life so that they take it to heart and use the, these, uh, these prophetic revelations to to benefit themselves, oh God. Father, I just pray that you anoint me to deliver this message in a way that's going to not only help people, but primarily give you glory, God. We love you, we praise you, we worship you. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. All right, if you want to write stuff down, grab, grab a notebook. It's going to be good. It's going to be short, but it's good. Oh, Jesus. I, and honestly, can I tell you, I really wish... I really wish we didn't have to do stuff like this. I, I do. I wish this was not necessary. I wish we didn't have to worry about this stuff. I wish the devil would just go someplace. Like, just, just go somewhere, okay? But he won't. Especially because many of the people who are attached to my ministry and some other very relevant ministries are getting ready to show up for the Lord in 2017 in a way that's going to really... Oh, uh, take back some territory. Oh my God. Some of you are going to take territory for the kingdom. Some of you are just going to, you're just going to invade existing territories and just take stuff over and just put down your flag for Jesus. And the devil's like, oh snap, everything is going wrong. Oh snap. Now what do we, so, so he's launching these attacks, but here it is. Your potential and your anointing your potential in your anointing are going to attract demonic attention. We talked about that the other day. That's the truth. It's your potential in your anointing. So if anybody is saying, well, why me? I don't even really have a lot going on right now. Um, I kind of have a lot of problems right now. I'm struggling with many things right now. Oh, sweetheart, listen to me. He is attracted to your potential. He can spot your potential and he can read your anointing. And so that is attracting the demonic manifestation. This is not a possibility. It's a guarantee. We see the pattern time and time again. We see this pattern time and time again. First, there was Job. Okay, Job. And I want you to look at Job chapter 1, verse 8. Job chapter 1, verse 8. Also Job 2 and 3. This was a guy who was a loyal, loyal servant of the Lord. He had that spirit of excellence and Satan couldn't stand it. So he tried to just really accuse Job uh, in the courts of God. He tried to really break Job down. So a lot of you, when you've got stuff coming at you financially and you've got stuff even coming at your health, please, somebody, I need you to make the connection between your sickness and, and, and the devil. I need you to draw a connection between your disease, your illness, your depression, and the devil. He's able to do these things right? And he'll try to break you down. But I also want you to look at another tactic that he uses. Yeah, he attacks your family, your finances, your health. Okay. What does that mean? That means that you can rebuke those things. If your health is under attack, rebuke the spirit behind, get spirit filled. You got to be Holy Ghost filled and then rebuke the spirit behind the attack. If your finances are under attack right now, if you are struggling financially, get filled with the Holy Ghost, pray to the Lord, ask him to fill you with the spirit of, uh, of the Holy Spirit and then rebuke the spirit behind that attack. If your family, your children, your husband, your marriage is under attack, get filled with the Holy Ghost and rebuke the spirit. All right. Job 1 and 8, Job 2 and 3 is going to show you all you need to know about that solid information.
that Satan attacks your family, your kids, your money, and your health. No, you don't just have a cold. No, it is not a generational disease. That's just what the doctor said. No, uh, your kids are not just falling in with the wrong crowd on accident. It is a spirit and you need to rebuke it. Now, a second tactic that he's using right now is he is uh, subtly questioning your identity and capability. Very subtly. Very, very subtle. And we read about this in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. It's a very familiar account of when um, Jesus challenged, or when Satan rather challenged Jesus, right? And we've talked about this a lot, so I'm not going to go into detail. But it's the familiar account where Satan challenged Jesus. He's like, well, hold on, no, 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 listen. If you're the son of God, then just, you know, just do this. What do you mean if? Dude. Step off, Satan, man. Like, you wouldn't even be trying to do something with him if you didn't know he was the son of God. Shut up. So, but what he does is he very subtly uh, causes you to question your identity. Well, you know, are you really, really capable of this? Do you really have what it takes uh, to, to run that business? Are you are you capable of being a good a good mom, honey? I mean, mm. you know, after all, look at your family record. After all, look at look at all the generations of poverty. Can you even handle that 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 business that opportunity that the Lord? Can, maybe this isn't really for you. After all, aren't you the same person who used to be on welfare? Mm. After all, didn't you used to do drugs? And he will call things to your remembrance. He'll send people into your life. Listen to me. He will send people into your life. Uh, Luke chapter 4, look it up. You got to read the whole chapter. Luke chapter 4, it distinctly says, Then Satan entered Judas and caused Judas to do what he did when he betrayed the Lord. Can I say that again? Then Satan entered Judas and caused Judas to do what he did when he betrayed the Lord. This was Judas. Judas was a believer. He had been with Jesus. He had been there for the entire ministry. He, he knew that Jesus was the real deal, right? But Judas had a weakness. Judas had some issues. Judas had, I don't have time to preach into that right now. We could, there's so much I could unpack from, from just Luke chapter 4. So much. Because Judas had some psychological challenges. And, and oh my God. Okay, I, there's so, so many places we could go with that. I would love to just unpack Luke chapter 4. It was his psychological issues. It was his underlying insecurity. It was his underlying instability. It was his, it was his, his financial challenges. Uh, Judas was the only one of all the 12 that didn't, that had money issues, right? And so those things caused a psychological rift. Are you hearing me? Those things were Judas's crack. And that is how the devil was able to get in there. All right, so from that we learn, from that we learn that the devil can and will use weak, broken, wounded, unstable people. They can be believers. They can be fellow believers. They can be Christians. If they have a weakness, if they have a wound, if they have an issue, if they have some instability, he can get to them and he will get to them and he will use people near you. He will send somebody into your life to remind you of what you used to do. He will send somebody into your life to remind you of who you used to be. That he will send somebody into your life to say the things that he believes or that he hopes are going to make you Question your identity. Am I really who God says I am? Can I really do this? Am I ready for this? Can I handle this? Mm -hmm. You need to rebuke that as well. Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 18. Acts chapter 16, 16 through 18. There is the familiar account of the demon-possessed girl who, who did guess what? Guess what she was doing? Look it up. You got to see this. All she did was follow the Apostle Paul around, bothering him. Demon-possessed, 
found Paul just, just, just biting at his heels, like a little, like a little dog, just biting at his heels. The devil will cause people to just be like gnats, just be like fleas, be like buzzing flies, to just bother you, bother you, bother you, bother you, chip, chip away at you. You got to rebuke that as well. These are three of the techniques that he is using right now. Okay, so hear me, please hear me, men and women of God. There is growth and blessing coming to your life. You are in a prophetic cycle wherein breakthrough is the theme. There, this is a time of great potential. We are talking about your destiny. We are talking about purpose. So please hear me, expect attack expect attack in a twisted way it's actually your confirmation you hear me i'm telling you something in a twisted way it's actually a confirmation because the devil doesn't come to rob an empty vault we've heard that before but it's so good he doesn't come to rob an empty vault if you did not have great potential he wouldn't be bothering with you at all Oh, honey, trust me, he'd, he'd be working on somebody else. But because of your potential, because of your anointing, that is what is going to attract the attack, right? Now, listen to me. When it happens, I need you to rebuke the spirit behind the attack. Do not engage with the people. Do not engage with the people. You may be tempted to say something back. You may be tempted to put them in their place. You may be tempted to try to even help them. But they are on assignment. Mm. They are on assignment to ruin you. The most powerful thing you can do is to pray for them. The Lord told us to pray for our enemies. The most powerful thing you can do is to pray for them. And please don't underestimate the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Please, please don't underestimate the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit can take psycho Saul of Tarsus and turn him into the Apostle Paul. The most powerful thing you can do, the most loving and relevant thing you can do is to pray for those people. Do not engage with them. Are you hearing me? Don't engage with the people. Rebuke the spirit behind the attack. Pray for the person and stay focused. Maintain your focus. It's an attack. It's a tactic. He's trying to get you off your balance. He's trying to get you out of position so that you are not ready and prepared for your breakthrough and your promotion. My God, we're exposing the devil's techniques today. We're exposing it. When it happens, you're going to rebuke the spirit behind the attack. Pray for the people being used by the devil. Don't engage with them. Engage, listen to me carefully. Engaging. And hopefully unhinging you, that's the devil's goal, you know. You hear me? That's his goal. He wants you to talk to them. He wants to draw you into a confrontation. He wants to draw you into, um, what do they call it, a debate. He wants to draw you into being um, defensive, of defending yourself. Oh, honey, you may be completely 100% justified in defending yourself, but you, who do you need to defend yourself to? It's, it's a trick. Don't let it work. Don't let it work. James 4 and 7 says, rebuke the devil and he will flee from you. How do you rebuke the devil? Satan, I take authority over you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over myself right now in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you, devil. I command you to go and never return. I, I rebuke and bind every demon on assignment right now. I cancel the assignment of the enemy in the mighty name of Jesus. I plead the blood over my money, my ministry, my marriage, my man, my children, my house house, my health, my mission, my, that's how you rebuke. Okay. Ephesians 6, 12 and 13, Ephesians 6, 12 and 13 verifies it. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's not the, even the people that you're going to be really fighting with. It's the spirits behind them, the spirits behind them. So you take authority over the situation. You rebuke the spirit. Pray for the person. Maintain your focus. Maintain your focus. This is no time to compromise your assignment. Please listen. This is no time to come. We are right at the end. We are right on the cusp of 2017. This is no time to compromise your potential. This is no time to compromise your assignment. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, so I had another prophetic dream. 
don't know if you caught it on Saturday night, but last week, the Lord <coughs> gave me a prophetic dream about a football player, and that was on Tuesday morning. Little did I know that on Thursday afternoon, I had a coaching session already booked on my calendar with a NFL football player. I had no idea, but the Lord gave me a dream about him and, and his career and his future on Tuesday. Praise God, glory to God, and it blessed that man of God. It was wonderful. Um, and now the Lord gave me another um, prophetic dream, and it's going to be for many of you, so I need to give it to you. I need to show you what's going on right now, okay? Get some water, because this is... This is this is deep. Huh? In the dream, I saw three women. <clears throat> I saw three women. There were three women over here, off to one side, and there was one woman over here, okay? And the three women who were over there were believers in Christ. They were, they, were, um, they, they were lovers of the Lord, but they were also under the influence of a Jezebel spirit. They were under the influence of a Jezebel spirit. These three women, uh, they were a clique, okay? Uh, they were almost like a club. Um, they, they, they took and posted a lot of selfies. They were, they were like selfie nation, okay? Um, uh, very cliquish. And the way they were viewing the woman who was over there was with a lot of gossip and disdain. They did not like her. They were threatened by her. Uh, the reality is they were threatened by her, but they weren't saying that. What they were saying is, mm, look at her. She thinks she can wear that. She's really not all that. Look at what she's wearing. OMG. And they were just like that, right? But the irony is that they were very, very ambitious about their businesses, very ambitious about their, their companies, very ambitious about their, their platforms, very, very, very ambitious about it, right? But yet out of the same mouth, they were saying that they love the Lord, love Jesus, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I got a new contract. Thank you, Jesus. And, 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 and the, the funny thing is, then the Lord showed me the perspective and the feelings of the woman who was off to the side by herself. Very, very beautiful woman inside and out. Very, very um, confident, but a little quieter in nature. A little quieter in nature. Oh, she knew how to talk. She knew how to articulate herself. Versus a hijab girl. What in the world? That's not even relevant. You sit there. And actually, I don't have time. I don't have time to rebuke it. I have an appointment. All right. So this, this other woman knew how to articulate herself. But she would not. It wasn't that she was quiet or shy. Not shy at all. No, 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 no. She just would never join in with that. She would never be a part of that. She was just like, wow, man. And, and these are women of God. And, and, and these are women who, who say they love the Lord. And, and wow. And so, but interestingly, they were hoping, listen to me, please. They were hoping to make her feel left out. They wanted her to feel left out. She did not feel left out but they wanted her to. They wanted her to feel like she was not a part of their group. They were gossipy. They were mean girls. They were mean girls, right? And the interesting thing, and then the Lord said, this is literal for somebody in your ministry. Somebody who's around your ministry, attached to the ministry, under the ministry. This is literal. This is what is going on in them, around them, in their life right now. Uh, I'm, I'm going to assume that you will hear this message. Feel free to email me if you want to. Um, but here it is. You don't even know them. That's the truth. You don't really even know them. But they know you. Because they look at you. They dissect you. They look at your page. They study you. You don't even really know them. You don't want to know them. But they know you, honey. Isn't that a mess? Isn't that a mess? But watch this. But then they wonder, 
why they're not growing they used to. They wonder why they're not growing the way they used to at the rate they used to grow. They wonder why they seem to have hit a ceiling. Mm, I just can't, I can't. I can't break up through this, this level here, okay? So they were rising, they were growing at one point, but then they hit a ceiling. And I'm hearing gossip, and they talk about you, and they talk about others, and they wonder why they hit a ceiling and why they, they can't just seem to break through the ceiling. Catch that. They hit a ceiling. They can't seem to break through. They are not connecting their gossip with their lack of growth. They are not connecting their, their catty uh, nature with the fact that they're experiencing something called truncated growth. Somebody say that, truncated growth. Do you know what truncated growth is? That's when the Lord puts a clamp on it. Nah, you're not going nowhere right now. You, 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 can, you can keep what you got. I can't trust you with more. Nope. Got the clamp on it. Truncated growth. Uh, I'm going to allow you to keep what you have for now until I see how you do. Because now I'm watching you. But you will not be going any higher until you get yourself together, if you can. Truncated. T -R yep, truncated. Somebody said it properly. Yep. Well, that's what it is. Let's read from Proverbs. I got my Bible all open to it. So I was studying this, okay? Let's read from Proverbs 18, verses 6 through 8. Proverbs 18, verses 6 through 8. Because I want to show you what the Lord feels about this kind of behavior, okay? Proverbs 18, 6 through 8. It says, a fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calls for blows. A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a talebearer are like tasty trifles, and they go drown in the innermost body. They're blowing themselves up and don't even know it. They're, they're speaking lies, they're telling stories, and, and they're truncating their own growth. They are limiting their own growth. They're creating the, the ceiling that they can't seem to break through, and they don't even know it. But there it is. That is uh, the Lord's viewpoint on that kind of topic. And let's just go ahead and declare Isaiah 54 and 17 over all of us right now. I want to decree and declare the manifestation station of Isaiah 54 17 no weapon formed against you is going to prosper no weapon formed against you is going God didn't say that the weapons won't form they will Satan's a punk he don't stop and he's not going to stop until Jesus shows up and shuts him down and his little games that he's running but the weapons may form but they will not prosper including this particular weapon of gossip hoping to make you feel left out, wanting to make you feel left out, wanting to make sure that you see them where they are, what they do. I'm telling you, it's, it, there was something about the selfies. I don't even know what this is about. I don't even know, but there was something about the selfies because the Lord just showed me snap, 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 snap. Un, un, unbelievable. And they're not connecting their gossip uh, they're catty image. It's very immature behavior. Um, this dream was for me. My God, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm, I'm glad it blessed you. How old are you? So we just said, how old are you? Because that's relevant to the topic. Unfollow right now or just click out of the broadcast. So every time, I'm going to read the, the final part of Isaiah 54, 17b. Isaiah 54, 17b says, Every tongue that accuses you in judgment, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. Oh, that's good. Listen, every tongue that accuses you in judgment, oh, you will condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their vindication is from me, declares the Lord. That means that you don't have to worry about them. Please don't worry about them. Don't even let them bother you. Matter of fact, just go ahead and block them, sweetheart. Block them. Block them. 
because the Lord sees and he knows. He sees what they're doing. He sees what they're saying. He hears what they're saying. He knows what their strategies are. He's going to vindicate you. You don't have to. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. You have a God who will show up for you. We, and, and, and if you want to know to what extent God will fight for you, if you want to know the extent to which he will fight for you, Go watch my broadcast from the other day, Jehovah Shabbaoth. You have got to realize and you have to really um, comprehend the level of holy supernatural warfare that the Lord is ready to, to work on your behalf because he does not take it kindly when his anointed are accused. Mm -mm. He does not take it kindly when his anointed are mistreated, especially if it's from other people who say that they know the Lord. So I pray the peace of the Lord over you in the mighty and precious name of Jesus, right? But now we're not done. This Now, this is the quick part, okay? I'm going to try to make this super quick. The second part of this broadcast is... I have to really, I want to say this carefully, but don't get mad. Don't get defensive and get mad. Some of you are spending too much time in your DM, in the DMs. Mm -hmm. and, and you are all tied up in this whole relationship thing and you are all tied up and trying to get a relationship together, right? Secret crushes, exactly. And the Lord wants me to tell you that he sees your secret crushes and he sees your, okay, um, you got like night, I call it nighttime glow. Nighttime glow, okay? Like when I when I walk upstairs and I see, you know, my kids are be like, oh no, I'm sleeping. Really? Then what's that glow underneath your blanket? Oh, that's your phone. Mm -hmm. Put the phone up. Okay, secret glow. Yeah, okay. That's when, you know, it's nighttime and you you're, you're, you went to bed and everything's quiet. Nobody knows what you, you're on your phone. You're talking to people and you're looking at stuff. You're looking at stuff on your phone. Shh, 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 shh. Don't get mad. Don't get defensive. You asked for God's help regarding a relationship. You asked for the Lord to bless you with a good relationship. You asked for God to, 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 to help you. You asked for God to send you somebody. You asked for the Lord to help you to be patient and in and, and all the things that you needed to be because you didn't want to make any more mistakes and, and you didn't want to be heartbroken again and, and you didn't want to make another poor judgment. And, and Because listen, so here it is. You asked for help. Here it is. You ask for help. Here it is. Because somebody is about to navigate themselves into murky waters again. Because it's all going down in the DMs, isn't it, baby? Mm-hmm. It's all. And, and you're not focused on your assignment. You're not focused on, 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 on just getting, make, putting the Lord first in your life right now. My God, you're not. You haven't even. I want to say this carefully. Let me slow down. Hold on. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. Let me slow down. I got a new teacup. Look at this. Do you think it's big enough? No, for real. Is this big enough? Let me slow down. If you and I were talking in person... Listen to me, please. If you and I were talking in person and I could get you alone for five minutes, I'm confident that you would tell me, no, Prophetess Whitaker, I don't feel like I'm fully in, in my destiny right now. No. No, Prophetess Whitaker, I'm really not ready for a relationship. Not really. Financially, mentally, spiritually. Mm -mm. No, Prophetess Whitaker, I, I don't feel, am I walking in purpose? I'm getting there, but I'm not really in purpose. Financially, I'm getting there, but so you are not really ready. So therefore, your focus at this time must be, hold on, let me get rid of this fool. Your focus at this time must be the Lord, getting close to Jesus, 
Letting him be Lord of your life. Lord of your life. That means you obey him. You repent of sin. You stay consecrated and sanctified. Consecrate yourself unto the Lord. Focus on the Lord. Focus on becoming the best version of yourself. You've got to trust in the Lord. Psalm 27, 14 says, wait on the Lord. He's got the right person for you. He's got the right timing all lined up. Okay, wait on the Lord. You know that you are on the cusp of navigating yourself into some very murky waters again. And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, your next prayer, see right now you're, you're praying for the Lord to send you somebody. But if you're not careful, your next prayer is going to be, God, get me out of this. God, can you please get me out of this? God, can you please help me with this broken heart? Because my heart is broken again. You must wait on the Lord. Okay? Don't let your flesh take you down. Don't let your flesh take you down. Go read the entire book of Philippians. Go read the entire book of Galatians. Paul will tell it, baby. Paul will help you get your flesh into submission. You got to be strong. You got to fight this thing. Okay? Listen, if the, the, the person that the Lord sends you, you're not going to have to have night glow working, uh, working stuff out like in the DMs. No. That person will come in in such a way so that you know. So that you know. And you will be in such a confident, strong place in your life so that you know that this is of God because you're in a good place. The, the, the potential person is in, in a good place. And now you guys can come together and give God some glory uh, through your relationship. Okay? But you've got to wait on the Lord and focus on Him right now. Do not, do not block your next blessing, please, by doing stuff in the DMs that could potentially disqualify you or give the devil something to accuse you over. Mm hmm Give the devil something to accuse you over. You don't need to be trading selfies. What? No. So, don't block your next blessing. Don't block your potential promotion. Because of an impatience issue. All right. So I just declare supernatural patience over you right now. Supernatural strength and discipline over you right now. Discipline. Mm. Listen, patience and discipline are necessary for all the things that you want. You want a good relationship. You want a promotion. You want a purpose. You want destiny. You're going to need patience and discipline for those things. Develop it now. Put in the time now. Mm, and you will be glad later. All right. I got to go because it's 1244 and I have a one o'clock. 1245 and I have a one o'clock. So I love you all very much. I pray this. Did this help anybody? Was this good? Did this help anybody at all? <clears throat> awesome 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 <clears throat> all right guys oh i hate it when you swallow wrong <clears throat> on that note i love you all very much i'm gonna go get a lozenge because i gotta be able to talk for my coaching appointment but i love you this is your last chance to share swipe to the right on an iphone swipe up on an android that will allow you to share <clears throat> on all the platforms. I'm going to leave you with uh, two thoughts. Number one, please mark your calendar down. For, yep, more matcha. Exactly, I'm going to do it. Mark on your calendar January 2nd at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. January 2nd, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm going to be releasing um, a prophetic word for 2017. It's going to just be a very, very, very... Uh, really in-depth stuff so you want to cite some time i'm going to be on periscope live facebook live youtube live doing it on all three platforms simultaneously i don't know how we're gonna do it john said he's gonna hook it up go john he's gonna rig it up for me so that is on january 2nd at 7 p.m speaking of john also he and i are working on some really awesome surprises for you guys for 2017 mm -hmm. no not stuff for you to buy surprises things that will bless you Okay, so um, I just wanted to kind of like put that out there because I love to do surprises. At that, on that note, I love you all very much. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. I love you and I will see you again soon.